Alright, so a very happy new year, 2024, a uh, <laughs> seemingly uh, uh, addition-like year, uh, and uh, this video I'm making has been actually a lot, quite a, quite a few months in the making, um, I decided for personal reasons not to make it um, immediately when this incident happened to me, this experience, let's say. Uh, and it's been quite an interesting uh, and educational experience at that. Uh, so for personal reasons and for uh, also global reasons as well, I didn't want to make this video uh, right after uh, this um, uh, experience, uh, you know, kind of just came out of nowhere and danced the dance in front of me, as they often do. But uh, one thing that motivated me to make this video now is that uh, AI is featuring very heavily in the news. And uh, like the way most topics in science and technology are covered in the media, uh, quantum computing, of course, uh, um, uh, virtual reality, uh, I found the hype and hysteria around AI in particular to be somewhat unfocused and strangely devoid of genuine first-hand experience in actual real-life scenarios. Now, that can be true of quantum um, computing as well. That's another topic, uh, actually, a field that I'm researching in at the moment, that is, again, strangely devoid of actual real-life experiences, real-life scenarios, uh, and the hype kind of taking over, uh, hype and, in some cases, hysteria, uh, but much more so hysteria when we get, delve into this topic of AI, artificial intelligence, uh, so-called AI. Uh, being um, effectively used now as a tool. Uh, the hysteria has now kind of followed a little bit of the hype, uh, but again, somewhat devoid of actual specific uh, and succinct real-life scenarios. Now, for people who follow this channel, uh, you may notice when I actually cover a topic or delve into it, I usually showcase my hands-on experience uh, with a kind of a live showcasing. So, for instance, when I talk about drones or had talked about drones in the past, uh, I have showcased my drone flying and imaging capabilities. I just didn't give reviews. Uh, I, uh, When I showcased energy harvesting uh, much, much longer ago, uh, when I worked in the field of energy harvesting developing circuits, I showcased actually the circuitry. And in the case of quantum physics now, I also i am actually showing the real-life examples, uh, optics, laboratories, uh, and uh, my research into uh, complex networks, trying to bridge complex networks in practice uh, with, uh, with quantum technologies. And it's my view that experience and practice actually really do drive understanding and future planning about how to use technology. Um, it's all well and good to show animations and cartoons <laughs> uh, like the one I'm showing here, uh, but they don't really give any, uh, any you know, they're kind of like uh, the Chinese meal equivalent of understanding. You, uh, you know, you eat it and uh, 10 minutes later you're hungry again. Uh, so here in similar fashion, uh, I'd like to share with you some, uh, some interesting experience I've had with um, a, de a deliberately annoying uh, AI chatbot uh, on this app, this banking app, N26, uh, a German um, uh, banking app that's actually uh, sort of uh, weaseled its way into uh, countries across Europe, uh, in Spain in particular. It's particularly uh, um, used because uh, it's quite handy. It's a bit like Revolut, uh, but it's actually uh, useful for effectively getting paid if you're doing work in Spain. And uh, the interesting outcome I've had <laughs> is basically of being locked out of my account uh, due to being stuck in a loop uh, of basically document verification uh, that's entirely managed by AI chatbots. Uh, so some of the aspects of the experience of I've had have really given me pause for thought about the future of AI, what it actually means to have AI linked with uh, effectively a, an app used for transactions of all kinds. Uh, I mean, saying AI is taking over banking uh, doesn't really mean very much, uh, but it's really taking over banking in the sense of customer service and uh, in particular for uh, document verification. And uh, naturally enough, uh, any system, any machine uh, will suffer from, um, you know, kind of uh, what are called normal accidents, uh, sort of inherent chaos um, in, the, uh, in the system, the network in this case, AI being based on neural networks. 
Uh, but AI is particularly interesting uh, because we're actually dealing here with this concept called a black box. Now, a black box is sort of like, if you remember from school, at least in my education, when you learned about functions, uh, functions, mathematical functions, that is, sort of operate a little bit like a machine uh, where you don't see the interior too much, uh, but you know that there is an input and an output uh, to this system, but the actual mechanism about how the function works, let's say, uh, is, can be lost on you. Uh, it may have some type of particular shape, uh, such as a um, uh, exponential function or sigmoidal uh, function, which actually AI um, nodes uh, in a neural network, uh, the, um, the neurons effectively uh, use a lot of uh, sigmoidal activation functions, but they're all kind of uh, hidden in a sense, in the deep structure of this uh, network. So effectively, they function as a black box. Uh, that's what that means. And uh, in practice, uh, that means, well, when communicating with AI, it's entirely prompt driven. Uh, and since AI is actually not overseen being a black box, uh, unless it's actually um, as a layer, a designated layer in a deep structure of its network to be overseen or to do um, effectively analysis on the different pathways that decision uh, making um, trees effectively logic trees uh, pass through a network uh, this will be entirely hidden uh, from view and it will only be dr prompt driven uh, with an output class uh, you know kind of uh, <laughs> um, taken as a prima facie result of this uh, system so when communicating with AI, it's not overseen uh, by any expertise. And if this is implemented in a chatbot, it can be effectively a balance of brute force uh, outcomes and a search space in a, in a memory of learned outcomes. So it is interesting that AI has sort of led to a greater dependence on searching for answers uh, by the actual people uh, that are unfortunate uh, to uh, you, uh, be, be the victims of AI. Uh, so you have to effectively, when you are, um, you know, kind of the victim of an AI uh, chatbot or whatever, giving you a wrong answer, chat GPT and so on, it kind of does motivate you in a strange way to search uh, for answers rather than encouraging, say, expert oversight in platforms uh, such as uh, chat GPT or uh, in the case of AI chatbots, particularly um, uh, evident um, such that they're using them actually to replace uh, the actual expert oversight in this case. And this is actually particularly apparent now in social media where people have been um, had experience again close enough to, to this uh, kind of like um, in, in lore at least uh, that social media is kind of uh, blocking their accounts or uh, in the case of uh, YouTube and so on taking down their videos for seemingly no apparent reason and the lack of expert oversight means that uh, with the increase of AI uh, means that um, and more and more uh, of these instances of um, greater dependence of actual users searching for answers rather than customer service uh, supplying the answers uh, will be evident in the future and uh, this will have huge repercussions if this is continued to be introduced to banking uh, people remember um uh, back you know my my um, own family my own uh, parents uh, used to live in a time <laughs> way back when uh, when um there was no debit cards and of course the uh, uh, instance of having a problem with the bank really meant that you had to visit the bank uh, to uh, to solve the problem. Uh, but now the lack of expert oversight means that uh, people are left searching ever more uh, for solutions to uh, banking uh, problems, problems with banking apps. And this is ever going to increase now with AI if it is going to be uh, the way of the quote unquote future in uh, banking. And indeed, this is uh, even different from other virtual assets on the internet itself. Uh, the sort of uh, internet is, in a way, kind of uh, modeled a little bit, uh, from my point of view, the modern internet, on a kind of a virtual fiefdom of digital land assets in the form of websites, uh, you know, market websites such as eBay, Amazon, and so on. And that is effectively the state of the internet today. So if you take a website like eBay, where the assets are basically liquid, uh, you know, they're physical assets, uh, then the communication has to be streamlined uh, to be automated in many of the domains. Uh, you cannot put links, for instance, uh, to external sites on eBay in messages, and the algorithm optimizes your posting uh, based, of course, on its initial description and if you uh, promote it and so on. So everything else then is governed uh, on this uh, type of model 
of a, of a website by a, an external agent with expertise. eBay, for instance, Amazon too, I'm sure, uh, but eBay in particular, because of its history, has had uh, always had moderators uh, for the purchase and sale of illegal items, transaction shipping problems, of course, have to be managed by a personal expertise, uh, someone employed basically by the, by, by the website, by the company, uh, to actually have uh, basically, um, uh, basically experience uh, to provide customer service. Uh, this cannot be done by by uh, automation, by streamlined automation. Uh, so even by the customer base, uh, they are going on eBay with a fairly high degree of what they want. Uh, I, for one, uh, have actually bought very obscure technology on eBay over the years. Again, showcased on this channel, everything from cryo coolers to uh, to um, you know lasers from uh, tattoo removal machines. Uh, so this rep this implies that uh, even the um, the people that are moderating eBay do have a quite a high degree of expertise of what to be what is sold and what ca what can be sold uh, on eBay and what type of transactions can occur. Now this takes me to uh, the kind of uh, the star of the show of this video uh, N twenty six uh, the mobile bank uh, as advertised uh, by its uh, developers. Uh, but it's really been taken over by AI in the form of chatbots and, of course, more interestingly, in the form of document verification. So uh, if this ever does get stuck in a loop, uh, it can effectively have you uh, debanked. And with some increasing instances of social media, uh, it's actually, it actually seems to be the opposite of, uh, of, um, of eBay, the eBay uh, kind of model of, of, of streamlined customer service. And I've learned that uh, the moderation actually of the documentation you're supplying uh, to N26, a uh, banking app, so it requires, you know, a copy of visual identity, uh, tax uh, number, and so on. Uh, so it's actually all mol molded. Uh, these answers, basically, in the form of sending documents, all has to be molded by the user to fit with AI or uh, completely booted out altogether. Uh, and uh, and uh, replaced by well, yeah, chatbots and N26 seems to rely incredibly heavily on both, uh, with chatbots being uh, particularly uh, used in uh, in uh, customer service. So this means, uh, ironically, uh, the user has to do a greater search on potential prompts. Uh, AI again is a black box. Uh, so, uh, like I talked about before, uh, the fact that it's entirely prompt driven, uh, the user now has to do a greater search on potential prompts uh, to effectively nudge the AI into giving a response or else risk getting it stuck in a loop and uh, thus they themselves drop the ball. Uh, yeah, N26 have effectively dropped the ball that is customer uh, service. So information service uh, in general for the, for anything that's going to last on the internet and AI is not going to be a panacea to solve this. Uh, inter information service uh, should be resilient enough t uh, to the customer's uh, unique needs. Uh, the chatbot may be kind of a uniform kind of system, a monolithic system, but every customer is going to be different, right? So uh, replacing uh, what could be a quite a dynamic and adaptive and resilient customer service with a black box that has a tendency to get nudged into a certain place uh, with no supervision, incidentally, uh, it's almost as if they've replaced people working uh, together in a designated office with a kind of a giant uh, prompt operated magic eight ball uh, in effect. Um, a sophisticated one for sure, uh, but one that can have its internal mechanism actually get stuck in certain loops uh, that are actually impossible to remedy unless you actually uh, <laughs> smash it uh, into a full reset, you know, delete your, your bank account and uh, basically uh, um, uh, negate any transactions that you've done in the past and any, uh, you know, money you may have actually in the bank in the first place. Again, destroying the actual function of uh, the bank itself. Uh, so the trouble in this case uh, is if you have an entire banking system, you know, maybe one or two apps uh, ex using this technology uh, is annoying, a problem. But if you start to have uh, to think about it, if you have an entire banking system getting taken over with AI, uh, you've pretty much made a doomsday decision uh, to a local and possibly global economy. Uh, I mean, if this continues uh, to get implemented, uh, more and more instances of this will happen.
And worse still, uh, that in all closed systems, uh, they're actually inherently chaotic and black box. Uh, AI systems are no exception to this. So when they're nudged into certain states, uh, even small perturbations in various pathways, in uh, even a small neural network, say, used use for a chatbot or um, document verification, uh, will can lead to very different outcomes. And with the complexity of AI based on uh, neural networks, uh, ever ever greater ones, uh, banking, of course, is very, very interested in this, uh, has adopted uh, comp computers and the internet very, very early on in its history. And so AI, uh, I'm sad to say, will most likely be adopted uh, quite aggressively by uh, banks as uh, 2024 unfolds and 2025 of course, as well, because the one thing about this technology, which is very different from uh, from any other uh, online technology in the past, um, it's incredibly rapid uh, in its development, and it will be adopted uh, by by banks uh, ever more into the future. And uh, this means that uh, a lot of these problems may only ever be found out by experiment uh, done, so to speak, uh, such as in my experience of being effectively locked out of uh, N26 uh, by supplying documents in the wrong order and uh, effectively getting the system stuck uh, for actual, literally months. Uh, this uh, in actual experience happened to me uh, back in uh, July um, 2023. So uh, this is a uh, funny kind of occurrence. Uh, the bank was only being uh, kind of used uh, sporadically when I was traveling. Uh, but uh, people that may very well be uh, forced to use these banks, such as students uh, and, of course, uh, um, you know, um, exchange students, foreign students and so on in uh, different countries where they may not have an IBAN number uh, or a, um, a SWIFT uh, bank account and so on, uh, they're going to fall ever more victim into uh, these potential traps of uh, effectively having uh, their their savings or their money used for buying uh, food and uh, paying uh, rent, paying bills, uh, effectively blocked uh, by some uh, chatbot, by some uh, basically uh, obscure, uh, deep uh, neural network. So that's all my way of saying uh, that this uh, technology seems very, very risky to me and uh, has led me to think about uh, AI linked with uh, transactions uh, that may be, you know, kind of seen as attractive to solve certain problems, but will undoubtedly breed uh, existence of other problems as well. And these may very well be hidden problems that will uh, be waiting to surprise us all uh, very, very soon. So uh, keep keep watching out for uh, more and more occurrences of this happening because uh, it's going to be a very, very bumpy ride ahead.